Hey guys, Impact here. In this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about my first impressions on the reworked vision system for season 4. There are some pretty big changes coming our way, so in order to get the information out best way possible, I'll divide the video in two parts. First, I'll tell you what has changed, and then I'll analyze the changes and let you know what this means for everyone, focusing a little more on the support's point of view. First of all, Psy Wards have been renamed. They are now called Stealth Wards, and each player can only carry three at the same time. You may carry three Stealth Wards plus a Ruby Sidestone, for instance, but every time you place a new ward, even if it's from a trinket, the oldest one will disappear just like it does when you're, you place your fourth Ruby Sidestone ward at the moment. They cost 75 gold just like they did in Season 3. The vision ward suffered the most drastic changes. You are now limited to a single vision ward and you can only carry two of them at the same time in your inventory. The new vision ward doesn't have the time limit and it has 5 HP instead of 3 like the stealth ward. However, it is indeed visible. This means that anyone who sees the vision ward can actually remove it without the need of true sight. It has the same behavior as any champion. You can't see it if it's in the fog of war or even inside an unwarded bush, but you'll be able to see it as soon as you get close to it. Oracle's Elixir has been removed from the game as well, so if you're looking for a way to clear the enemy vision over your team, you'll have to find another way of doing it. The purpose of the removal was to slow down the snowball effect that a team would get as soon as they bought the Oracles before their enemies did. And finally we have the trinkets. There are three at your disposal, and everyone will be able to get theirs at level 1 since they're free. You do have to get them from the shop, however. The trinkets have three stages, the first one being the one you get from the shop, the shop for zero gold, the second one being an automated level up as soon as you reach level 9, and the third one will actually cost you pretty much the same as boot and chance, 475 gold. Each level will grant your trinket either an additional effect or a larger range of its active. Also, you won't be able to use your trinkets for the first 90 seconds of the game and selling them will disable your trinket use for 180 seconds, even if you buy a new one. So let's talk specifics. First off, we have the Warding Totem. You'll be able to use it to place a stealth ward that lasts for 60 seconds, much like an Explorer ward. Don't forget that the wards you place from the totem are still considered stealth wards, so you won't be able to place your three wards plus the trinkets. The totem's cooldown is 2 minutes. The first upgrade will get you Greater Totem. The stealth ward placed will now last 2 minutes instead of 1, and the trinket will have the same cooldown as it did before. You'll then have a choice. You can spend 475 gold to get either a greater stealth totem or a greater vision totem. The greater stealth totem will allow you to place a stealth ward that will last for 3 minutes instead of the previous 2 minutes, and the active's cooldown will remain the same. The greater vision totem, however, will allow you to place a vision ward. In case you don't remember already, the vision wards will be visible, but they'll give you true sight over their range, and they'll last until they're killed. This trinket has a 3 minute cooldown. Moving on to trinket number 2, the Scrying Orb. It reveals a small location within 1100 range for 1 second with a 150 second cooldown. It's really similar to Clairvoyance, but your cast range will be a lot shorter, just like the duration effect. At level 9, you'll get the automatic upgrade, the Greater Orb. It will now reveal an area up to 2000 units away for 1 second instead of 1100 units away. It still has a 150 second cooldown. If you choose to spend the 475 gold to upgrade, it, you'll get the Far Sight Orb and it'll reveal an area up to 2500 units away for one second with a 90 second cooldown. Last but not least, we have the Sweeping Lens Trinket, which reveals and disables nearby invisible traps and wards for 4 seconds in a small radius with a 3 minute cooldown. Now, this trinket won't actually delete traps and wards by itself, but they won't be active for the duration of your trinket either, meaning you'll be able to clear Timu's mushrooms without accidentally stepping on one, for instance. At level 9, you'll get Greater Lens. It'll still reveal and disable nearby traps, devices and wards for 6 seconds, but the radius will be wider and it'll have a 90 second cooldown. Choose to upgrade it and you'll have Oracle's Lens. The effect will still be the same as Greater's Lens, but it will now also grant you detection of nearby invisible units for 10 seconds. Think of it as a 10 second Oracle's every time you use your trinket. Okay, so that's all fun and great, but what does this mean for the players, specifically for the supports and for the metagame? All I can actually do right now is guess. Only time will tell what people will actually choose to do with the new vision system, but allow me to share a few thoughts. 
Everyone will have some sort of vision granting mechanism. The trinkets will make sure of that. But since we're now limited to three wards per player, a team can just rely completely on their jungler and support to war their map. I can see the carries not getting wards to speed up their builds, but mid laners and top laners will probably have to spend some, some of their gold income on warding. Getting bush control in the bottom line is also going to be more difficult. The pink ward placement has to be a strategic choice. You can use your sweeping lens trinket to help out in that regard, but it has a 3 minute cooldown level 1, so your enemies will be able to just place another ward if you don't have a pink ward with you. I can also see two other optimal ways of using this. To secure objectives such as dragon would be the most obvious one, and to bait out your opponents to clear the ward, engaging on them as soon as they do. With that being said, I think it's important to point out that the pink ward location should be in a safe position, somewhere that you can defend with the aid of minions or even your teammates. Placing a pink ward inside the enemy's jungle or enemy controlled area may not be such a great idea since you won't be able to defend it. Remember that the pink ward will be the most reliable source of true sight that you'll have at your disposal. Your other alternative is the sweeping lens trinket and upgrades. I'm guessing this will be the favorite trinket to have on supports for bush control and on junglers that focus greatly on ganking. Junglers that focusing on counter jungling rather than ganking can also opt for the scrying orb for scouting ahead of time. This may also get picked up by mid laners who wish to roam a lot, like Zed, Ari or Kassadin. If the solo laners are looking for a more safe landing phase, they should also consider getting the warding totem and upgrading it as soon as possible. The AD carries will have all choices at their disposal as well. When playing against the sorts of Twitch, getting a sweeping lens may be the best option, while Scrying Orb may help out with skirmishes near a bushed area. The option that I see most AD carries go for, however, is the Warding Totem. It'll help defending against ganks when the support runs out of wards, as well as skirmishes near bushes since it can actually grant sight over them for a longer period of time. You can also adapt your trinket purchases according to your team comp and the enemy team comp. If for instance the enemy team has a rumble, a Nivea or something that can really shine in fights in narrow places like the jungle, maybe getting multiple scrying orbs can give you the upper hand. I can also see champions with stealth base skills or skill sets shining a lot more in Season 4. Timo can also become one of the worst nightmares to face in Season 4 because of his mushrooms. Players will probably start to look for champion picks that will help out with the lack of true sight. Natalie's or Caitlyn's traps are definitely alternatives. Jinx's zap or Lulu's help picks may also prove to be incredibly useful when facing stealth champions. All in all, League of Legends will probably become a more fast-paced game, much like Season 2, with a lot more room for counterplay. With the ward limits per player, vision ward limits, Oracle's elixir removal and sweeping lens introduction, the laning phases won't be as safe anymore. Wards and vision wards will have to be placed strategically and at the best time possible. Once again, only time will tell what will happen in competitive play, but for now, I can say that I'm definitely excited for the changes to come. That's all for this episode of First Impressions, guys. I hope the video helps you start Season 4 the best way possible. As always, don't forget to thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel, to Base Desires channel, and to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and my stream. Everything will be linked up in the description. Thanks for watching, good luck, have fun, and until next video. you by my side i feel like nothing's working i'm trying to blow up fast in this city at the same time make some cash from ambition see i got this vision my click will rule the nation